But the community is not yet perfected in this its self-consciousness. In general, its content exists for it in the form of picture thinking. And the duality in this thinking still attaches even to the actual spirituality of the community, to its return out of its picture thinking, just as the element of pure thought itself was burdened with it. The community also does not possess the consciousness of what it is. It is spiritual self-consciousness, which is not an object to itself as this self-consciousness, or which, which does not unfold itself to a consciousness of itself, but rather, insofar as it is consciousness, it has those picture thoughts which we have considered. We see self-consciousness at its last turning point become inward to itself and attain to a knowledge of its inwardness. We see it divest itself of its natural existence and acquire pure negativity. But the positive meaning, that is, that this negativity or pure inwardness of knowledge is just as much the self-identical essence, or in other words, that substance has here succeeded in becoming absolute self-consciousness, this is an other for the devotional consciousness. It grasps this aspect, that is, that the pure inwardization of knowledge is in itself absolute simplicity or substance as the picture thought of something which is so, not in virtue of its notion, but as the deed of an alien satisfaction. In other words, it does not grasp the fact that this depth of the pure self is the power by which the abstract divine being is drawn down from its abstraction and raised to a self by the power of this pure devotion. The action of the self retains towards it this negative meaning because the externalization, the kenosis of substance, is taken by the self to be an action implicit in the nature of substance. The self does not grasp and truly comprehend it or does not find it in its own action as such. This unity of essence and the self having been implicitly achieved, consciousness too still has this picture thought of its reconciliation, but as a picture thought, it obtains satisfaction by externally attaching to its pure negativity the positive meaning of the unity of itself with the essential being. Its satisfaction thus itself remains burdened with the antithesis of a beyond. Its own reconciliation, therefore, enters its consciousness as something distant, as something in the distant future, just as the reconciliation which the other self achieved appears as something in the distant past, just as the individual divine man has a father in principle and only an actual mother, so too the universal divine man, the community, has for its father its own doing and knowing, but for its mother, eternal love, which it only feels, but does not behold in its consciousness as an actual immediate object. Its reconciliation, therefore, is in its heart, but its consciousness is still divided against itself, and its actual world is still disrupted. What enters its consciousness as the in itself, or the side of pure mediation, is a reconciliation that lies in the beyond. But what enters it as present, as the side of immediacy and existence, is the world which still has to await its transfiguration. The world is indeed implicitly reconciled with the divine being and regarding the divine being, it is known of course, that it recognizes the object as no longer alienated from it, but as identical with it in its love. But for self-consciousness, this immediate presence still has not the shape of spirit. The spirit of the community is thus in its immediate consciousness divided from its religious consciousness, which declares it is true that in themselves they are not divided. But this merely implicit unity is not realized or has not yet become an equally absolute being for self. With paragraph 787, we're now finishing up the religion section, the second to last portion of the phenomenology. And we are very close to the end because we have only the very short absolute knowing section now to go through and we're crossing a threshold into it. So we've surveyed all of this development in the past. You know, there's the preface and the introduction, but what really matters for the religion section 
is the consciousness, the self-consciousness, the reason and spirit sections, which we saw early on are coming together like threads being drawn into a knot. Now we're finally at the end of this penultimate section. And this is a long paragraph. There's a good bit going on here, but we should think of this as a sort of summarization and a bringing together of all of these previous themes. So he begins by invoking this notion of community, Gemeinde, which we've been developing both in the revealed religion section and in the earlier sections. He says it's not yet perfected, that is vollendet, it's not brought to its fruition yet in its self-consciousness. It has been brought to fruition in consciousness, as we can see, but not fully as self-consciousness. So he tells us what's wrong. Well, in general, its content, its inhalt, exists for it in the form of picture thinking, of Vorstellung, representation, as we've talked about for so long. We don't need to rehearse the difference between picture thinking or its many different uh, synonyms and its uh, opposition to something greater than it. And we saw that the community still does use picture thinking, right? In the previous paragraphs that we've surveyed. So he says that the, the duality, the, uh, you know, being doubled in this, in its thinking, still attaches to the actual spirituality, the spirit of the community. Actual here is wirklich, right? So the, we could say, to invoke a, something he's going to talk about a little bit later, worldly, the present spirit of the community is present to itself and through itself through representation. So he says that it attaches to the spirituality of the community to its return out of its picture thinking. And he says, just as the element of pure thought itself was burdened with it. And this is a this is a word that Hegel's going to use several times in this paragraph, being burdened being laden down with, being, you could say, uh, conditioned or determined or made particular by it in such a way that doesn't allow it to completely reach its fruition. So he goes on and he says, the community also does not possess the consciousness of what it is. And here he's going to tell us, what it is. All he's going to tell us more as we move into absolute knowing where the community is going to be the locus of where we discover ourselves and find our full recognition. So what is it missing? What doesn't it get? He says it is spiritual self-consciousness, right? Geistige Selbstbewusstsein, which is not an object to itself as now notice this very important qualifier, this self-consciousness. It is present to itself, as we've seen previously, as self-consciousness. It grasps itself as self-consciousness, but not as this self-consciousness. What self-consciousness are we talking about here? So he says, um, which does not unfold itself to a consciousness of itself, but Insofar as it is consciousness, it has those picture thoughts, which we have considered, right? Those picture thoughts, which we have been discussing this entire time. So what picture thoughts are we thinking about? Well, you know, a little bit later in here, he's going to talk about the, you know, divine human being. That's Jesus in this story that spans going back into, you know, the fall of human beings and, all of these struggles of the people of God and then a Messiah being sent to them, but, you know, as a little baby, <laughs> as, you know, this warrior who's going to restore everything and then the teaching and, uh, you know, this reconciliation between human and God through this person and then his, his death, the death of God and the resurrection, the resurrection, not just of him, but of the community. All of this is part of the story, Right. And there could be many other parts of it. All of those are matters of representation. So he goes on and he tells us that 
we see self-consciousness at its last turning point become inward to itself and attain to a knowledge of its inwardness. And this is a, a very important point as well. And this is not something unique to the religion section. Self-consciousness, human self-consciousness, you know, exists in relation to other self-consciousnesses, but it has an interiority. And we've been talking about this the entire time. People are always like, well, what is the for itself for Hegel? Is it just pure negativity of the in itself? No, that's Jean Paul Sartre, who is, you know, working with these categories. Inwardness, the in sich gehen that we've been talking about, the going into itself or withdrawal into itself, this is actually quite important. He's not saying this so much uh, explicitly here, but this is going to be tied in with devotional consciousness that is going to take us beyond the devotional consciousness of the unhappy consciousness, which could only see itself as something lacking, something lesser in relation to a eternal that is in the great Jenseits, the beyond that we're also going to see discussed here in this passage as well. Here, the human being in the community, the community of, of belief and action and thinking, attains an inwardness to itself, grasping itself as a human being with an interiority to itself, right? And so we go on and he says, it attains to its a knowledge of this inwardness. We see it divest itself of its natural existence and acquire pure negativity. What's your natural existence? Well, in my case, what you are actually seeing right here in front of you, this body, which is determinate, which has, you know, age and gender and all sorts of other markers that we can talk about a certain height. How tall am I? Eh, about this tall, right? It doesn't tell you anything, right? That's a meaningless thing for me to do, but it's kind of an interesting joke nonetheless. But it does, you know, it does measure for myself, you know, when I put my hand on my head like that. So, you know, the question is, well, who, who is this person? Who am I? Who, who is the person of the religious community? Is it just what we see, the determinants of ourselves in our social existence within the community, how we're marked? Or is there a negativity within every single one of us that possesses, as we saw all the way back in the preface, a power, right, of negativity, of, of being able to be other? This is what part of what makes us human is that we are negativity, even in all of this development, all of this complicated growth, we still remain free. And that's part of the negativity. So he goes on and he says the positive meaning of this, that this negativity or pure inwardness of, notice what he says, Knowledge is just as much the self-identical essence, the vesen, right, that is uh, related to itself. Or in other words, and this goes back to some of the developments that were taking place in this, this section, right? Let me pause for a moment and, and let's remind ourselves. We got a lot of S words in English and mostly in German also floating around, right? We've got self-consciousness. We have subject we have self, selbst, right? This reflexivity of things, the, this identity of things. And then we also have substance. So sub, subject, substance, uh, self, self-consciousness. All of these things are connected to each other as we have witnessed before. And he says, uh, substance has here succeeded in becoming absolute self-consciousness. Now, typically when we think about a substance, and we've talked about this many times in other paragraph commentaries, we think of something that may be dynamic, but is in a certain sense lacking intentional agency, right? That's, you need to have 
self in order to have that or be a subject substance by itself you know it, it lasts it perdures through time it may even do things like a tree could be a substance in an aristotelian sense uh you know hegel's acorn and oak right from the preface but it's only when it actually becomes self-consciousness that the substance realizes makes wirklich what the possibilities of substance are we are substances right we as members of the community are substances connected with other substances other self-consciousnesses within the spiritual community so he goes on and he says that uh, it succeeded in becoming absolute self-consciousness so absolute here doesn't just mean like taken to its furthest extent. I mean, it isn't taken to its furthest extent, right? Because it's not full ended as we saw at the beginning of the paragraph. Absolute here means connecting everything together, right? The product of all these sublations, a term, by the way, which he doesn't use here. He doesn't use aufheben or aufgehoben. He uses erhoben over and over again for raising up in this, this, uh, paragraph so he goes on and he says that um here we go the substance is becoming succeeded in becoming absolute self-consciousness this absolute self-consciousness and here this shows you why it's not reached its its full ending its perfection its finalization um it is an other an andres for and here hegel's going to use an important term the devotional consciousness devotional on right um later on he's going to talk about andacht devotion so we've got these two things going on here and what does this mean so when we talk about being devoted or devotions that has a typically religious sort of connotation so you do your devotions like maybe if you're a catholic you say the rosary which is a whole number of prayers that are counted by using you know these beads and then you meditate upon various mysteries and you know it can get kind of complicated and people introduce all sorts of other things but that's a good example of a devotional um, saying grace before meals right praying over the food that you're going to have um, whether it's a, you know, regular, same thing every single time prayer or it's extemporaneous, it's devotional. And these are actually good examples because they're not just like purely throwing your words or prayers up there to God or something like that. There's some sort of physicality, some sort of actuality in Hegel, Hegelian terms, Wirklichkeit, that is involved and it is you who is doing it so the devotional consciousness this is the religious consciousness but engaging itself towards something else and notice that he's saying here that the devotional consciousness it's not it's not getting everything it's still using picture thought or representation there's still bifurcations there's still dichotomies to use the earlier word that he was using there is a duality that needs to be overcome so he, he goes on and he says it meaning the devotional consciousness grasps this aspect that the pure inward inwardization right going inside of itself of knowledge is in itself absolute simplicity or substance as the picture thought of something which is so and then he says not in virtue of its notion, its begriff, right, the concept. So not grasping it that way, but grasping it through picture thinking. But as the deed, the doing, the handlung in this case, of a alien satisfaction, fremdis, right? And Hegel's using a couple different um, terms here that we translate as satisfaction or satisfying right and this is going to play an important role why do we care about satisfaction 
Well, that's what we're aiming for, right? You know, we saw all the way back in the self-consciousness section that human being as self-consciousness is begirda, desire, hunger. Desire for what? For something that will genuinely satisfy it. And, you know, we've gone through all sorts of interesting transformations. Maybe it could be dominating another self-consciousness or enjoying the fruits of it, the Lord and the master. Maybe it could be being in touch with the, the good, the rational, the true, you know, stoicism. Maybe it's just tearing things down, skepticism. Maybe it's reaching out to that eternal, you know, beyond uh, unhappy consciousness. All these other things in the reason section, all these other things in the spirit section, all sorts of matters can be. Uh, potential satisfactions. Religion has its own satisfactions. So he goes on and he tells us it doesn't grasp the fact that this depth of the pure self is the power by which the abstract divine being, God, is drawn down from its abstraction and raised to a self by the power, once again, of this pure devotion, highness andacht, right? We make God what God is, in part for Hegel, by what we do with God. So he goes on and he says, the action of the self retains towards it this negative meaning. Why? Because the externalization, oisong, the kenosis. Now, kenosis is a theological term not there in the German. Typically means a, an emptying. It's coming from Greek, right? And it's used as part of Christian theology. Is it wrong? No, but Miller is being periphrastic here. He's trying to like, you know, signal to us that we're talking about, you know, Christianity. So the kenosis of substance is taken by the self to be an action, a comportment implicit in the nature of substance. The self, he says, does not grasp and truly comprehend it or does not find it in its own action as such. So the self, the religious community and the people within it are not yet getting that they are the ones doing what's being done. They're still thinking in terms of themselves and a God who is different than them, right? Even if the God lives inside their heart or stuff like that. So he's going to tell us about how this framework works in a bit, but he goes on and he says, this unity of essence and the self having been implicitly achieved, notice Hegel's always talking about, well, this was implicitly done. Now we need to move to the explicit. Implicitly achieved consciousness too still has this picture thought of its reconciliation, right? So um, reconciliation, yeah, I did spell it correctly. Versunung. This is a really important term uh, throughout the rest of this paragraph. This is what religion has been aiming at, right? This is what the whole process aims at, reconciliation, bringing things together that seem to be in conflict, seem to be opposed to each other, that seem not to fit. But uh, we don't have a true reconciliation here. We don't have a conceptual reconciliation. We have the picture thought, the, the imagination, the representation of reconciliation. So he says we have this, you know, as a picture thought, it obtains satisfaction by externally attaching to its pure negativity, the positive meaning of the unity of itself with the essential being. So we're still in a duality, God, us, essential unity, but we're still distinct from each other because it's in picture thinking. And here he's going to say something really interesting. It's satisfaction, right? It's befriedigung, remains burdened with what? With the antithesis of a beyond. Now, I've mentioned many times that, that Miller uses this word antithesis in a kind of fast and loose way. Sometimes it is translating things that are merely opposed to each other, you know, and gegensetzen. Sometimes it is translating... Um, you know, other terms as well that, that represent opposition. Sometimes it's translating what it is here, gegensatz, contradiction. It's not just an antithesis, antithesis. It is a full contradiction, right? So that is quite important to signal here. Um, 
A contradiction of what? A contradiction of the beyond, of the Jenseits. Where did we encounter that? Well, you know, back when we also talked about religion in the unhappy consciousness. Right? So we have to be very careful not to slip back into that and to make some progress here. So he says its own reconciliation enters its consciousness as something distant, at was fairness. Right? Fan is something that is at a distance, right? So what are the modalities of this? He's going to talk about a distant past and a distant future. Literally, it's not a distant past. It's a distance of the past. Fairness der Vergangenheit, right? And it's not a distant future. It's a distance of the future. Fairness der Zukunft. And... What do we have here? Something that is represented, something that is imagined rather than experienced. He says, its own reconciliation enters its consciousness as something distant, as something in the distant future, just as the reconciliation which the other self achieved appears as something in the distant past. And then he's got this very interesting, like little, you know, musing here, an analogy. He says, just as the individual divine man, who's that? Jesus, right? Uh, had a father in principle and only an actual Wirklich mother. Mary is the actual human being who bears Jesus, the Theotokos, the God bearer. And, you know, the Holy Spirit overshadows her, whatever the hell that means, right? And Hegel wants us to figure out what things mean. So what corresponds to the father and to the mother in this case, he tells us that so too the universal divine man, and now notice what he's going to say here, which is a very quick uh, equation. So to the universal divine man, the community, no longer an individual, the community has for its father, what? Its own doing and knowing. How can you be your own Father, Well, a community can, right? Because it's generational. It continues on and on and on. Its own doing, its own knowing. And these are intimately connected for Hegel, right? The practical and the theoretical. So it's got a, 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 it's a father to itself. And then there's the mother. What's the mother in this case? Eternal love, which it only feels but does not behold in its consciousness as an actual in, immediate object. Feeling, gefühl for Hegel, is lesser than representation, which of course is lesser than conceptual thought. So he goes on and he says, its reconciliation therefore is in its heart, right? So there is a reconciliation ready for us, but its consciousness is still divided against itself and its actual world is still disrupted. What enters its consciousness as the in itself or the side of pure mediation is a reconciliation that lies in the beyond. What beyond? The distant future or the distant past, but not right here and now, not yet. So he says what enters it as present is the side of immediacy. Right? So the present is the Gagan Vartega, you know, which is being here opposed to the past and the future and position between them as mediating. Uh, immediacy, right? Unmittelbarkeit and existence. Dasein is what? The world. The world that we live in. The world that we act in. The world that we think in. The world that we represent in. The world in which the community exists throughout time. And he says, it's the world which still has to await its transfiguration. So everything's not done yet. He says the world is indeed implicitly reconciled with the divine being and regarding the divine being, it is known, of course, that it recognizes the object as no longer alienated from it, you know, distanced from it, but identical with it in its love. So you'll notice he's bringing up love once again here, but love is still at the point of a being a feeling for self-consciousness. He says this immediate presence of the world that is reconciled with God is not, still has not yet the shape of spirit. So he tells us to conclude here, the spirit of the community is in its immediate consciousness divided from its religious consciousness, which declares that in themselves they are not divided, but this merely implicit unity is not realized, has not become an equally absolute being for self. 
we've got a lot of stuff going on here. We've got a lot of stuff that's been achieved here, but a lot of it is still, you could say, on paper, implicit. It hasn't been brought out completely. Does that mean that it's not any good? No. And, and to not be completely fulfilled doesn't mean that you haven't gotten like three quarters of the way there, or perhaps you know, seven eighths or whatever we want. But it still has more to develop. That's where we're going in the next section. So now we've, we've seen what religion and religion as a culmination of all these other movements can actually get us to. And notice, let me close on this. This happens in the community. This does not happen with the isolated philosophical individual in the proverbial ivory tower, totally you know, separated from everybody else, figuring out what the real meaning of the scriptures is or activities or stuff like that. No, it's got to happen in relation to the rest of the members of the community. It's, it's got to be something where we all come along on this, not just the sage, not just the you know brilliant philosopher, but everything is supposed to transform into philosophy.